What is going on guys? I'm Director Nat, back for another reaction, and today we're checking out Amphibia Season 2, Episode 1. I finally finished Season 1 last week, and now I'm so ready to jump in and see what Season 2 has to offer. It looks like this episode is called Handy Ann and Fort in the Road. I'm really hoping that second title suggests that we are finally going to go beyond the valley and explore the rest of Amphibia, trying to find Anne a way home and seeing all these kind of different crazy locations. And I hope that they'll continue developing the overarching story of the season in this episode. We got to some of that in the season one finale. We got to see a glimpse of Anne's life in the human world. We saw her go toe to toe with Sasha. The toads of Toad Tower have been established as a main threat. And there's still the calamity box that only Hot Pop knows what it really is and he hit it. So I'm wondering how that's going to work out since it's apparently Anne's only way back home. So yeah, lots of questions going into this episode and I'm really excited to start this season and I want to get Get caught up before season three comes out that I can react to it uh, as it premieres. So I guess we shouldn't waste any more time. Let's just get right into it. All right, Sprig, new season, new possibilities. <laughs> new season. Into my best self. Yeah, Soon. that's what I've been hearing about this season. Uh, Ow. We can finally travel outside the valley to Newtopia. To what? Newtopia? Not only that, but maybe out on the road, we'll find Marcy. Yeah! Could you give Chuck the spare key when he swings by? Because I hired him to protect the house from all the things waiting to destroy it. Locusts, tornadoes, flaming locust tornadoes. <laughs> Shale hail, pain bows. It's like a rainbow, but looking at it turns you inside out. Starting to feel a little guilty about all this. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's Chuck. I grow tulips. <laughs> Turns out we won't need you after all because I'm going to disaster proof the house of myself. My first trip outside the valley. Which trusty slingshot? <sighs> I know. I'll let fate decide. We let the fate decide, huh? I got everything I need for the house. Just need something for the crops. The very heart and soul of a farm. That was weird. Yeah, it didn't feel right. <laughs> Don't you want to hear the rest of my cryptic warning? Mm, nope. Works for me. Cash or credit? <laughs> Yikes. Bro? I had a dream <gasps> crisis. Went a bit overboard. I <laughs> no. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> you pick this one. What? What? Why? No, it's great. Just gotta be really careful here. He's what you gotta do. You gotta slide in. Make sure no one's looking. Unsuspected. Flippy. Blah, blah, blah. Boom, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happening to this place while we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> the food. It seeks revenge. Oh, my God. That totally looked like uh, Xenomorph. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Not so funny now, huh? <laughs> now sling me! So he did choose the right one. Ugh. Ow. Oh, you just made a big mistake, buddy. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Okay, I'm sorry, I know, I know this sucks whenever people say this, but this is kind of something I have been spoiled on because I know that Anne is gonna go, like, basically Super Saiyan at some point later in the season when something really bad happens and her hair, like, gets all blue, so uh, I'm guessing that's what this is leading to. Now, I have no idea what it is or what is gonna unlock it later, but yeah, now I'm very curious to see what that's all about. Eat your vegetables. Okay. It's not your fault a mysterious green energy turned the crops evil. <laughs> say why? Why? I love how say what actually ended up being Hot Pop's catchphrase. We're not taking this trip for you. We're taking it with you. I'll fix the house first. No need. What? what? I grow tulips. Hoopa da boopa. <laughs> Hoopa da boopa. Oh, yeah. So does that mean it'll be episode three when we finally get there? Good idea to bring the music box with us on the trip. Oh, uh. Well, let's get this. this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to anyone. Wow. I never thought that Sprig would have a Pinkie Pie moment, but there we are. Whoa. Keep driving and never look back. <laughs> 
Hold on, Sprig. Look back here for a sec. Now that we're out of Pop Pop's rules of the road. By me, Hot Pop. <laughs> Rule number 98. Never strike a heroic pose on the wagon. <laughs> Newtopia, here we come. Road rule number 29. No shouting. <laughs> Zoom dudes. Time to show the world how fast you can go. Ever drive faster than a June bug can fly. <laughs> hey, hey, I just enforce the rules. I don't make them. You hmm? can't make them. And I stand by. <laughs> uh. Red alert, kid. We're coming up on the ruins of despair. They've been here long before any written history. Hey, mm. HP, I've never ridden in a wagon for this long, and I'm definitely gonna hurl. How do humans cope with such unreliable innards? Let me know when we can start moving. So let's take some quick selfies and get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dang. An ancient high-tech civilization. Mm. <laughs> so much to see. <sighs> Do you two realize how many rules you just broke? Just look at this place, Hop Pop. Levers. Don't you dare. Rule number 68. Okay, real quick before we see what the consequences of that are, like... What kind of experiences must Hop Pop have had to come up with all these rules? Because he had to have been in specific situations to learn that this stuff is a bad idea. So can we get a Hop Pop backstory episode, please? Maybe one involving why he's so scared of the Calamity Box. <sighs> I guess I just got to be patient because I am forcing myself to react to these episodes one at a time. Unlike season one, I kind of watched the second half of the season in batches in order to get caught up. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go. Just don't break rule 66. Startup engaged. Oh dang. Additional materials required. Please place them on the glowing access point. Ow, oh dang. Me. Oh. Um. He's <laughs> 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 It's like that scene in Attack of the Clones where Anakin is pinned down on a conveyor belt and having to dodge a bunch of obstacles. The danger is clearly over. <laughs> Where's Polly? For the rest of the trip, we'll follow all the rules. We've never taken a trip like this, and I just wanted it to go smoothly. And make a stop or two. Ugh. There was a time I'd pick out the bug bits. That time is past. <laughs> we didn't find out what that factory was making. Uh oh. Ooh! Okay, with how tall that volcano is and the fact that they're still showing it, that tells me they have to be going there at some point. Huh. A long trip towards a volcano. Where have we seen something like that before? Yeah, I'm sure it'll come to me. I really, really enjoyed this episode, and I can tell that as a whole, I'm going to enjoy season two a lot more than season one. Because don't get me wrong, season one was good, but I think maybe the reason it took me so long to get through it, apart from general schedule conflicts, is because it just uh, wasn't always great. My enjoyment kind of varied depending on which episode we were on, and it could sometimes get a little repetitive because we were primarily in one location and they couldn't really get to the uh, overarching story very often but now that we're on season two and we're getting more into the long-term story and we are beyond amphibia there's a lot more that they can do and it seems like they're really refining the show to its highest potential like I don't know if it was just me but the animation just seemed to pop a lot more it seems so much more smooth and like those facial reactions that I always like are just so on point so the art direction seems like it's gonna be really good this season and the characters just feel so vibrant and likable and everything really flows nicely so yeah in terms of enjoyment and the story I think I'm really gonna get sucked into this season as it goes on but let's get into the plot of these episodes so I really like where they picked up I like the addition to the theme song it seems that they were cutting certain scenes a little quicker so I thought maybe they were gonna add something new in and like there it was clearly establishing that the rivalry between Anne and Sasha is not over and I can't wait to see her again and I like how they show the effects that the season one finale had on and she's, you know, trying to act like everything is OK now that they're finally going beyond the valley and they're going to find her a way home. But, you know, uh, your former best friend.
friend like turning against you and just really seeing her for what she was and almost losing her completely you know that's gonna leave a mark on a person so it, I can tell this is something she's gonna have to address later and maybe it's just gonna keep building up inside of her until she just lets it out and they do a good job setting up all the things that we have to look forward to this season all the crazy places that we're gonna go uh, the mystery around the calamity box when they're gonna find Marcy again and this uh, mysterious ancient civilization I guess because that really caught me by surprise because up until this point amphibia hasn't really been a technological society like they have plants that can glow and they use snails for vehicles but that's about as close as they get so I think that's a neat bit of world building, seeing these ruins containing ancient technology. Like, were these visitors from somewhere else like Anne? Were they the people of Amphibia and uh, something happened to their ancient civilization? It's got my mind racing and got me even more intrigued to watch the rest of the episodes. I wonder if this could be setting up the ultimate villain of the series because as I said last season while the toads were really imposing in the season one finale uh, in episode 10 they didn't really strike me as like the long term villain type just because of how they were initially presented and because of their limited numbers but Grimes did say that Anne couldn't possibly imagine what he was preparing for so maybe there is a bigger threat out there that we don't know about yet and this technology is related to it. But something else that was foreshadowed in the first half of the episode was that little glow in Anne's eyes and then suddenly she was, you know, just mopping the floor uh, with this giant monster. And I'm just going to let you guys know right now there are certain aspects of this season that have been spoiled for me that were just hard to avoid. Uh, so I won't go into specifics right now, but I will let you know that there are some things that I do know are coming even if I don't know the full context. And one of the things I know is that Anne is basically going to go I'm just saying Super Saiyan at the moment because that's the best way I know how to describe it and she's gonna like get glowing blue hair so I assume it's leading into that but again I have no idea what the context is I don't know what this power is inside her or where it comes from or what it signifies but boy am I excited to find out some other things I enjoyed in general were just getting to see what amphibia is like outside the valley I thought there were a lot of cool moments I uh, liked all the hilarious bit with the family members and hop up very Various rules, which again, that makes me wonder if we have to get a hot pop backstory episode at some point because, well, what did he go through to come up with all of these very specific rules? And obviously, I love the part where they explored the ruins and were suddenly in a fight to save Hop Hop's life and deal with this mysterious technology. And it ends with a robot coming out of the ground. We have probably not seen the last of that. And again, wondering what it signifies for the future. And we got a new outro with, I think, some new music. I'll have to go back and check that, but I really liked that. I, again, always like getting to see a little more of Amphibia. And there is that volcano that they showed at the beginning of the episode and they continue to show in the outro. So since we are on a long-term magical quest to get to some kind of destination and there's a volcano involved, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a Lord of the Rings situation. They're going to have to go there at some point. Maybe there will be some kind of epic battle that will end badly, but we just just have to wait to see about that but for now their goal is to get to Newtopia specifically and if I had to guess that's probably going to be episode three because Hop Pop said it was a two-week trip and at the time these episodes were coming out there would have been a two-week gap between episode one and episode three so that would be my guess when we get there but it could be next week or it could be a little later either way I don't mind the gap because now that we are outside of Amphibia and there are lots of interesting places to explore there are a lot of cool episodes that they can have in the meantime so yeah this is a really solid start to the season it's got me even more excited to see what happens going forward I think I'm gonna really start to enjoy this show a lot more and I cannot wait to see what comes next so with that I'm gonna turn it over to you guys what did you think of this episode what are some episodes you're looking forward to see me react to the most uh, try to stick to episode numbers if you can just because I don't want to see any spoilers in the title but whatever it is feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments and let me know what you think if this is your first time on the channel be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing Subscribing. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. It really does mean a lot. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for Amphibia Season 2, Episode 2.